Nigeria has four refineries in two in Port Harcourt. Uh, well, one has 65,000 barrels per day's capacity and was built in 1965 by Shell. It was bought over by an NPC and was expanded to 80,000 barrels per day. The new refineries in Port Harcourt has 150,000 barrels capacity. The Wari refinery, 125,000 barrels per day, and Kaduna refinery, 110,000 barrels per day's capacity. These refineries had suffered a lot of neglect. Some had their last turnaround maintenance in late 90s and 1998. But maintenance is supposed to be done every two years. Nigeria's oil minister, Ibe Kachuku, says plans by the government to fix the dying refineries and make them work to capacity will materialize in 2020. Nigeria's refinery capacity is expected to reach 1.1 million barrels per day in 2020. Recently, OPEC in its world outlook says Dangote refinery will cut West Africa's fuel imports. Refineries expected to refine as much as 650,000 barrels of crude per day. Hmm. To put this into perspective and make more sense, I have an energy consultant, Charles Majomi, is joining me via Skype from Abuja. It's great to have you join us, Charles. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Well, Charles, this looks like... Um, Finally, the Dangote refinery is all that it looks like we've been waiting for when the report from OPEC is saying that this will cut West Africa's fuel imports. What do you make of this? Well, no, certainly it will. I mean, adding 650,000 um, <clears throat> barrel per day refinery into <clears throat> operation will certainly provide for uh, all, pretty much all of Nigeria's ref uh, products needs. Uh, which would then free up capacity for other refineries that come on stream subsequently to, uh, to either take up the excess that comes on from population growth or expand locally to the, to the sub-region. So it's actually a very, very good thing. And I think that if it's on course, and provided that um, the, uh, the pricing arrangements are adequate, um, it would be a very welcome development indeed. Keep in mind, too, that um, uh, uh, Dangote's refinery is not the only one that is planned for the continent. In fact, um, currently on the African continent, there are 50 other refinery projects that are in various stages of development, and that if they are actually um, implemented and built, will add about 5 million barrels per day of of excess refining capacity to the continent, which would radically transform the landscape. Now, interesting, talking about uh, these other African countries, that move us away from foreign exchange that we keep pushing out of the country. But let's look at our state-owned refineries here. We've had turnaround maintenance before now, but what we have remains the same. They are still underperforming. Where do we go from here? We still need them to work we avoid, to avoid monopoly. Oh, most definitely we do. But keep in mind, too, that um, very often when you see things like um, refineries consistently not performing uh, to the capacities that they were built for, um, despite lots of money being spent on turnaround maintenance, keep in mind that that was probably done, well, not probably, it was done to support the existence of a, 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 a massive um, uh, uh, subsidy program which actually, the, the survival of which depends on keeping uh, our own um, refining capacity at a minimum. So what the subsidy does is it, um, it provides for um, uh, uh, our of petrol, uh, crude oil to be refined offshore in exchange for what's called a swap, where the uh, commensurate amount of petroleum products will be then imported. Um, that, in my opinion, has not worked. It's a 700 billion naira uh, um, albatross on the economy and on growth. And um, uh, to the extent that that continues to exist, then I believe that you will continue to see underperformance or non-performance the, with, the, with respect to local, local, local refining. 
Charles, staying with the local refineries now, I, I want us to look at, we know that it is capital intensive to fix all those refineries to make them work adequately as in to uh, perform optimally. But we talked about public-private partnership, getting private investors to come look at this. I'm not looking at outright privatization, but what do you think so that we could get them working? I'm looking away the from... First thing you need to, the first thing you need to do is you need to deregulate the... Um, the price, uh, I mean, if, as long as you subsidize, you provide a subsidy, um, and you are not allowing a willing buyer, willing seller arrangement to, to come into play, then the refineries are going to not um, um, uh, uh, be attractive for investors. It'll be interesting to know what the arrangements are with respect to the Dangote refinery um, and the government. I know that there are some arrangements that exist between Dangote and private um, and the private sector. You know, I know from his own oil um, um, exploration activities that will definitely be a supplier of feedstock. But with respect to other, with respect to the to uh, to the, for example, the Nigerian government's JV portion, which will have to be provided to him. Um, and that certainly cannot be has to be provided on a pricing basis that's going to make the refinery work. Um, it will be interesting to see what the details are. But certainly, I think a deregulated downstream uh, will drive private investment into refineries. Finally, Charles, you just touched on deregulation. That's the war that keeps running in the oil and gas sector at this time. If we deregulate or Nigeria agrees to deregulate, are you sure marketers won't take advantage of the pricing? I think there has to be a very orderly deregulation so as not to avoid, like you said, a, um, a, a incident of, um, of monopoly, but also to protect the, uh, the, 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 the consumers. So what we have proposed and what I've proposed in the past is that PPRA, um, which is, the, which is the sort of regulatory uh, body that uh, oversees pricing in this, and products pricing in this country, should provide a template for retailers, such so that the marketers don't take advantage. But this, while maintaining uh, a willing buyer, willing seller approach. So I think there has to be a gradual step down to deregulation. It can't happen overnight or impulsively. It has to be a gradual sort of midwifing towards a deregulated industry that protects the consumer whilst fostering a willing buyer, willing seller arrangement. And I think that can be done by presenting, for example, a, uh, a price template around um, the, uh, the pricing of products by PPRA. Charles Marjomi, Energy Consultant, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on Business Nigeria this afternoon.